Hi, I'm Larry Lou. Today, I will be reading Maxwell's Mountain by Sherry Becker, illustrated by Nicole Wong. It's called Maxwell's Mountain, and there's a boy standing on a boulder. I wonder what this could be about. Let's start reading. Maxwell's Mountain Maxwell climbed to the top of the slide and pulled Harry, the soldier with the red barret, from his back pocket. Slides are always the best spot to check out a new park. He looked to the left and saw a swing set. He looked to the right and saw a sandbox. Directly ahead, a seesaw. He turned his head to look behind him, and then he saw it. A mountain standing tall. It was awesome. It was glorious. It was big. The mountain was made of yellow and brown boulders and had a wooden fence around the top. It was a perfect lookout. Maxwell felt his feet pulling him towards the mountain. Come on, Harry, he whispered and scrambled down the slide. Hold it, partner, said Maxwell's mom. That hill is where big kids play. It's no hill. It's a mighty mountain, thought Maxwell. And who says I'm not a big kid? At dinner, Maxwell saw mountains everywhere. But when Maxwell asked if he could climb, his mom and dad agreed that he was too small. To tackle a mountain, you must be a great outdoorsman, said his dad. Then I'll be a great outdoorsman, said Maxwell. When his class visited the library next day, Maxwell asked the librarian for all the books she had on mountain climbing. I'm going to be an outdoorsman, he told her. That night, Maxwell looked through all of his books and made a list. Training was rigorous and hard. Every day, Maxwell and Harry climbed to the top of the staircase four times. It was the tallest mountain in the whole house. They practiced walking up, scrambling up, and hopping up. What are you doing? asked his mother. A true outdoorsman trains for an adventure, he replied. I see, she said. Maxwell and Harry drew a map of the whole park. In the middle was the mountain. A true outdoorsman knows exactly where he's going, said Maxwell to his mother. Maxwell and Harry collected and organized their gear. They found a red backpack in the coat closet, a yellow vinyl raincoat in case of rain, and a purple flashlight in his toy box. Then they built a compass out of an old watch and a shoebox. A true outdoorsman is prepared for everything, said Maxwell to his mother. But Maxwell wasn't done yet. Maxwell and Harry even put together a first aid kit, too, with ten superhero band-aids and an old super dog pillowcase in case they needed a sling. By now, Gear was sorted and lined up across Maxwell's bedroom floor, through the hallway, and down the stairs. Maxwell's parents could barely walk around the house without tripping. Can I climb the mountain now? he begged. A true outdoorsman knows when he's ready, and I'm ready. Hmm, said his mother. Do you think you'll need assistant navigators? I have Harry, replied Maxwell, but you can watch. All right, replied his mother. You can go. But don't forget, if he gets into trouble, a true outdoorsman uses his head. When they arrived at the foot of the mountain the next morning, Maxwell studied his map pulled out his compass to make sure he and Harry were going in the right direction, then strained his neck and looked up to the top of the mountain. It was much bigger than he remembered. But from here, he could see a trail making its way up to the mountain. 
there were three yellow dots leading the way. I'm off, he said. And with that, Maxwell and Harry headed for the first yellow dot. The bottom of the trail was made of little pebbles. Easy peasy, said Maxwell. Then the pebbles turned to larger stones. The climb was just like the staircase at home. Piece of cake, he said to Harry. Then they took a sip of their water and climbed on. Soon the stones became rocks, and Maxwell and Harry had to use their arms and legs to scramble up. They stopped on a big rock and snacked on an apple. Harry was already tired, but they couldn't stop now. We must keep moving ahead, Harry, said Maxwell. He looked at his compass to check his direction. Now Maxwell and Harry walked, climbed, and scrambled upwards. At a cliff, they ate their cookies and looked down at the sandbox, which was now smaller than Maxwell's hand. Almost there, Harry, he said. But the rocks were getting bigger. In fact, they were more like boulders. Maxwell and Harry had to look down, not just up, to keep their footing. Suddenly, they could not climb anymore. Maxwell looked up. The boulders ahead was bigger than he was. He stood up on his tiptoes, but he couldn't see the tops. And where were the yellow markings? He couldn't see one. He looked at Harry. I've lost the trail, he said. Maxwell sat down and sighed. His map was no use, not here. His compass wasn't any help, either. And what good was a water bottle now? He scratched his head, feeling very lost. And then he remembered. When he is in trouble, a true outdoorsman uses his head, his mom's head said. Maxwell began backing down exactly the way he'd come. He slid backward down one boulder, and then down the next. Going down was much harder than going up. A true outdoorsman's brave, Harry, he said as he scrambled. Finally, he came up to the last yellow dot he had passed. He looked up, but he couldn't find another dot anywhere. Maxwell stood on his tiptoes and looked around the bushes and at the side of boulders. Finally, painted on a half-hidden stone, Maxwell saw a yellow dot. Where there is one, there's sure to be another, Harry, Maxwell said, and he started to climb again. This time, he kept his head up. He spotted another yellow marker, another, and yet another. We're back on track, Harry, he said. We did it, Maxwell cheered as he pulled himself over the last boulder before the top. Good job, Harry, he said. From the top, he looked out. He could see the skyscrapers from the city, and he even thought that he could see his own roof. This really was a lookout. Spreading out his arms, Maxwell closed his eyes and took a deep breath. When he opened his eyes, he saw it. It was an ocean at the other end of town. It was awesome. It was glorious. And it was big. That's it for Maxwell's Mountain. I chose this book because I like going outside and hiking. And Maxwell does too. He hikes and I hike too. During the pandemic, we had to stay inside, so it's very important that we try to go outside once in a while and explore the world, maybe enjoy a view from the top of the mountain like Maxwell did.